hear me there. Um, so this um, this is basically uh, the the some the um, assessment report for this site hasn't been completed yet. So this will going to be a very general talk about the main uh, findings from the site from the excavation. The other thing uh, this will be also just uh, focusing on the Roman phase, which is subdivided into four phases, from the early Roman to the late Roman. Uh, the excavation was carried out in um, uh, late spring of 2022 and during the summer of 2022. Okay. Okay, site location. Okay, well, I mean, just to give an idea where we are, uh, we are basically in uh, between uh, uh, Coleman Street and Moorgate, um, and to the south of Grace uh, Salford Street. Um, so this particular area has been. Uh, um, it's, it's been excavated in the last uh, um, in the last few decades. Um, this is the position of the site during the uh, Roman period. The site is about uh, three hundred meters to the north east of the amphitheater, uh, and this area basically has been uh, uh, developed. Uh, relatively late during the uh, what's going on? Uh, there are some people out there with the microphone going, please. Can you send them on? And to the cabin, please, as well. Thank you. For that feedback. Okay. So the site is, is located in the western side, on the western side of Woodbrook Valley. Uh, it's an area which had been, uh, uh, been in use uh, um, during the Roman time uh, uh, for industrial uh, uh, activity. Um, go here some of the some of the few uh, key sites around the Daba excavation, uh, just to just introduce uh, the, some, some informa background information about the activity around in this particular area of Londinium. So uh, here we go like uh, um, to, the, to the north, we go uh, 55, 5561 more gate. Um, which uh, where we found that um, was found as a, a small quantity of, of glass um, and the furnace fragments, which uh, indicate that uh, glass making was uh, um, carried out in this in this particular site here. Uh, to the to the west, in uh, um, thirty five Basinghall Street, here. Um, a larger quantity of glass has been uh, found uh, um, together with uh, um, um, fragments of uh, um, um, for, um, evidence for furnace and uh, furnace equipment also. Um, the activity uh, in this particular site was um, carried out uh, until uh, the second half of the second century. Um, we got also a particular uh, in the, this particular site, uh, the Gilder Yard, uh, where, where a very large deposit of glass was um, excavated, was found about fifty kilogram, probably the largest uh, assemblage of glass. Um, it came to net from an area just to the east of the eastern entrance of the amphitheater, which is in. Um, in this site, was found in this particular site. Um, 58 Coleman Street, which is here, 
Again, um, we have a crucible fragment um, and also um, assemblage of domestic waste uh, with a, a larger proportion of high state of table wear. So, and finally, here in uh, uh, 20, 20, 28 Moorgate, this kind of, uh, this more, the most interesting site where uh, a series of eight kilns were used to produce pottery in the style of the Verulanian whiteware. Um, and also, uh, of course, also we have the um, glass making again. So basically, as you can see, we are in between uh, uh, an industrial area, an area which is in use as an industrial uh, um, for glass making, but also for metal working and uh, later working, later working. Okay. <coughs> All right. It's, it's blocked. <coughs> It doesn't, it doesn't go. Let's get to change that first of all. Let's point it at the uh, laptop. No, it's just the. <coughs> the PowerPoint's just seized up. Okay. There we are. I can do it manually. It's, no, it's just come on, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll do it manually. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. okay. So this is the uh, the area. Uh, the the blue area is the, is the basically the area that I, I will talk about, uh, and the the red uh, uh, spots are the, the evaluation trenches, the position of evaluation trenches. The the excavation anyway covered the whole. Uh, footprint of the of the basement, uh, but in, in this particular uh, talk, we'll I will concentrate on about the archaeology found in this area, uh, basically. Okay, so starting from the earliest speech, we have a a, a north uh, a northeast uh, uh, south uh, northwest southeast northwest uh, uh, ditch, which it is um, it was filled with it silted up. Uh, with uh, clay and silt. Uh, it seems to have been, uh, the issue probably was a, a, a drainage ditch. It's the earliest thing, and uh, there was very little in it. In it. And uh, it might, might, I think it was probably um, uh, first century, uh, first up, uh, second half of the first century anyway. Uh, the, uh, the function of this ditch is possibly like, uh, again, it's being excavated, uh, it's probably part of a larger network of ditches which act as a drainage ditch, but also probably it could have acted also during this period as a boundary ditch. But anyway, there was more in terms of ditch, a more substantial ditch was found in the southern part of the site. This time the ditch, this ditch was um, was partially excavated because the southern part of the same ditch extend behind the southern limit of excavation of the of the of the, of the site. Um, as you can see here, uh, we have like a, a sequence of. I mean, the ditch is, is being truncated by modern uh, uh, services, but you can clearly see there are at least three different phases of, 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 of brick cutting, which is actually shown in, the, in this section. Um, and the, more, the most interesting thing is that uh, the uh, phase two, let's say, has got a very large quantity of, gra of, of gravel. Uh, this gravel seems to have slumped from, from the north side, the north, the north uh, edge of the ditch. Now, this probably you can see some some of this gravel on this side, and this gravel is 
is man-made, is being deposited. Uh, so the gravel on this side represents a road, a Roman road. The ditch here represents the southern roadside ditch. <coughs> and the gravel you see here slanting is the gravel slanting for the top of the road. So the three different phases of recut represent the ma maintenance of the roadside ditch, which has been uh, regularly um, maintained. So they can actually work as a ditch to actually retain water and keep the road dry, basically. Here, we can see some more of the gravel. So we're still looking at the, we are looking at the uh, south part of the, of the side. And um, I'll show you this photograph because this shows the, the best preserved part of this road. As you can imagine, modern truncation, post-medieval truncation, uh, affected the uh, the layout of the, uh, the the full extent of the road to the point that only the south southern roadside ditch was visible, partially visible. Well, the north roadside ditch was completely destroyed and um, removed by uh, a modern foundation. So, so we will see this the impact of the modern activity here. So now we're looking at the gravel, the main gra uh, the, the, the gravel from the road, look at, and we're looking west. And you can see how much, uh, I mean, it's still coming um, substantial amount of gravel. Uh, there is about in excess of one meter of gravel. And uh, believe me, this was really, really well made. I mean, it was actually harder than in concrete, the modern concrete. We didn't even try to actually try to remove it. Actually, the, the machine had a problem trying to remove this gravel. Um, so here we can see more of the same gravel again. And uh, we can see how, you can see these different features represent um, a combination of post-medieval, but also Roman features, <coughs> especially this one here, you can see here, you can see the modern concrete on this side. Again, I mean, it's been completely destroyed during the century anyway, but uh, it's still kind of, a, you can still have an idea of the direction, the orientation, thickness, and uh, how many times have been <coughs> relayed and maintained. But wasn't the only road we found. This time we had another narrow, this is the profile of another road, which is running um, northeast, uh, southwest. This time the road was better preserved, uh, but it, it survived just a, um, uh, in a, on a four meter stretch. Here is the road. This, this narrow road. Um, and it's uh, when it was fully, fully exposed. You can actually see uh, a secret postal on the side of the road. Now, the postal here, they represent structure, wo uh, wooden structures. Some of the wooden structures would have like to act as uh, to, uh, to, to hold plants alongside the road, alongside the gravel to prevent the gravel from slumping into the ditch. Other, other posts will probably act as um, a shut, um, shoring for a uh, for platform facing into the road, construction platform where uh, to actually, uh, for the construction of building facing into the road. So, so you go like uh, either, either side of the ditch, uh, with uh, uh, plants of wood acting in a way for, to, to actually keep the, the, the ditch, the roadside ditch uh, in order. So prevent the gravel from this side to slump into the ditch and allowing the construction of the, of, of the, of the side of the road, on the side of the road. 
And here we can see what, what I was talking about. So, so you can see that the original construction of the roadside beach here had gravel slumping into, into the roadside beach and then in turn truncated by later wooden structure again. So, so when we see a road, we actually, and the roadside ditch, we see many different uh, phase of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, recut, backfilling, structure cutting into the fill of the, the, the roadside ditch. And again, here, we can see, it, oh, sorry. <laughs> We can see that the full extent of the of the of this uh, uh, narrow road, basically uh, follow, following the uh, full excavation of the of the of the ditches again. In terms of uh, on, on this phase, phase two, we also have a, a north south ditch again, which uh, was uh, located to the to the to the west of the of this road that I just showed you. This ditch again could have been a, in, in a, a function as, a, as also as a drainage ditch, but uh, again, it, it could also is 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 such a could have also have been a, a, of a as a boundary ditch. Here we can see basically this uh, the, the 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 location of the east west road to the south. The location of the narrow road, again, and the location of the roadside uh, of the ditch, uh, ditch two here, which again could have been um, connected to the to the to the uh, north ro roadside ditch for the main road anyway. Um, of course, the east-west road would have been built first. And then I guess, and then later, later this narrow road subdividing probably two insular uh, would have been constructed. So it was it, following the construction of the road infrastructure in this particular part of London. We we also have like a, a evidence for masonry building. In particular, this this is like a hopu signine floor, which is uh, sealed by post medieval deposits and a post, -med a post medieval cobbled surface. Here, probably you can see a little bit of that. So, the magra, the bedding uh, sealing the hopu signine floor, the Roman floor, was a mix of Roman. Um, uh, yeah, had quite quite a lot of residual Roman the, uh, Roman finds, but they mixed up with post medieval material. So the idea is that they possibly level during the post medieval period. They level everything on, on the level of the, the Roman building, and then they build a, a cobbled surface. Now, this cobbled surface is part of a basement of a post medieval basement. So. It also, this post medieval basement is it seems to be like a, a, a built being built during the first half of the 17th century, and uh, there, there were evidence for burnt material on top of the of, of the cobbled surface, so um, can be related to the um, Great Fire of London, of the 17th century. We still have, have to look at at it. But again, going back to the opposite signal and floor, it was very fragmented. It, it, did, it didn't survive very well, but uh, the, the, the excavation was done, uh, was actually following a, a watching brief uh, system where we were following the, the contractor, which was excavating underpinning trenches alongside the, the edge of, of the basement. So we ended up with uh, many, many, many different trenches. And uh, one of the underpinning trenches next to this, the, uh, the, this, the, this large trench, we had 
a little bit more of the same floor. And this time was actually better preserved. But again, it was truncated by, by a post medieval drain on, on this side and by um, a post medieval foundation on this side. Again, this is show, this this shows like uh, photographs so, uh, show the different phase of excavation. So this, this is what I'm talking about before is is kind of fragments of uh, post medieval and uh, Roman the, um, uh, material. Once we remove that, we have the full extent at least in this particular trench of, of the of the floor. And uh, as we go back to the uh, to the north, to the north, we had again same situation. So we have a modern uh, intrusion, post medieval cobbled surface, and once we remove that, we have a little bit of the bedding for the Roman floor. So some of the, some of the uh, um, opposite nine material. So. The building itself was uh, extending uh, in an area around the northwest of the site. However, so we didn't find any any in situ wall, but we have from a, from a very deep and large Roman shaft, we recover four or five crates wall plaster, Roman wall plaster, painted wall plaster. Um, so this, this wall plaster was uh, located very, very close to the opposite land floor. And uh, my, I mean, it, it's, it's very easy to say that this probably is part, it belongs to this building here. Um, high status, wall plaster, basically, uh, we got like a, a, a probably a candelabra here, floor of floor, flowers. Uh, we got a, 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 a different, different patterns. I mean, it seems that it, it, this, this wall plaster was uh, belong to a, a high status um, uh, house. Um, and uh, the date of the the play, uh, of the passage is, is, seems to be uh, uh, early second century, late uh, late first century, early second century. Among other build, uh, other structures, we also have like the, a typical clay and timber building, and in this case, they are visible. They are kind of a, um, identifiable by these, these things. Uh, this is an in situ wall plaster again. And uh, this postal will uh, be associated with the uh, uh, structural remains of the walls. And uh, this mixed material will be some of the collapsed wall. And it was, so basically, just to show how it worked, I mean, uh, we, we excavated this, this mixed material which reveal again a tessellated floor. So reuse tiles to form a floor, which was later replaced by a clay slab, a clay floor. So again, this will have been the inside of the building. It's gonna be like the cluster and uh, alongside the wall and this gonna be, it will be the position of the, of the, of the wall. Again, also a plus was this pottery actually found in the middle of the, of the inside of the building. We're nearly complete pot. Among other things, we have also uh, we had a um, what is what it was left of a of a of a Roman uh, timberware. So uh, the timber the. the the team, uh, I, I don't know if you can actually see this um, on this side. This, all this material here is modern, modern backfill. This is the backfill of the well itself. 
And what you see here is the timber, the, the timber which formed the, the sides of the well. And this is the construction cut back field again on that side. So it seems that the well was previously truncated. Either, I mean, this, this seems to me, when we see the position of the, of the trench across the, the well, it seems to be like a, the trench, we, we, people excavate to actually investigate an archeological trench, basically. To me, well, it, was, it was actually, it seems to have been possibly uh, a trench, uh, an archeological, archeological trench, which removed part of, 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 of the well. However, we, we were still able to actually to, to investigate the remaining bits and, uh, and uh, it's, it's actually quite substantial. It's, as you can see, it's probably about one meter, one meter 10 by uh, square. It should have been square. I mean, we didn't have the time to actually to, to remove the, the rest of the, of the backfield because we were too close to the, to the limit of excavation. And uh, in this particular situation, uh, there is a limit of what you can do when you've got contractor on site and they're pushing you every day to finish things off. Anyway, um, the, oh, the, another feature here, quite regular again, uh, this um, among, uh, one, one of the major features in here was also, uh, were also quarry pits, um, which were then uh, backfilled uh, with uh, a mix of uh, uh, domestic waste. And we can see this again here, um, just to make sure we, I initially, when I saw this, I, I thought it was another well, but and uh, it took it to I tried to make sure that uh, I got it right, and uh, I we went back and we we tried to get the whole uh, the, 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 the 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 profile of the feature in section, and uh, and here we can see the base and the side. But I mean, uh, there was no evidence for wood or anything, but it's kind of, it was very regular. Again, in terms of fines, we're still waiting for the, for the assessment. Uh, so um, it would be interesting to see what will, uh, what, will uh, what, what this particular feature contain. Um, so on this slide, we can actually see the, the, the setting of the, of the site during the uh, uh, phase three again. So we have uh, the, the road, the main road in funct uh, functioning, uh, the, east, uh, the narrow road, again, uh, uh, serving probably the buildings. The, the masonry buildings lo is located in, near the north uh, uh, west uh, corner of the site. And a, plated, a sequence of clay the building has been found in this particular area. So what I, what I show you previously was just one of the buildings that the most the best preserved, but there are many more plenty of buildings, um, which have been uh, probably um, modified or completely abandoned and then rebuilt as they, they used to do in these case. Um, now, we go back to the road um, to talk about the late Roman period. Um, and I already mentioned the fact that the, the road was badly truncated during the post medieval period, but also during the Roman period. And um, here we can actually see a different, um, I mean, it's quite clear. This, this is a gravel from the road and you can see different, different deposits and uh, they show how the, the road was built and possibly also repaired during, during, the, during the Roman period. But also we can see the big truncation on the side on this side, again, on this side. This is just one, one particular part of the road, but this, this can have been, this was actually uh, observed across the, the whole stretch of the main uh, road anyway. But I'm showing you the, the, this particular uh, slide because eventually the, the backfill of this large feature here it was in turn truncated by another 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 uh, structure here. Um, now you can actually see this patch of uh, burnt material here, 
and uh, again, um, dog or um, burn uh, clay on this side again. Um, since the beginning of the excavation, we had uh, evidence for, uh, we, we pick up quite, quite substantial amount of glass. And uh, we knew about, about how it was close to uh, uh, industrial activity during the Roman period. So, so we actually, kept, you know, in this particular area, we, we, we spent some time trying to understand what uh, kind of structure this would, could have been possible. And uh, just to give an idea, uh, this is um, a reconstruction of a schematic, schematic reconstruction of, of, a, of, a, of a Roman furnace. And when, when, you, when you see at the, when you compare the two things, uh, we can see that similarity. I mean, there is a, a, there is a concentration of burn material in the middle. Again, it can be, can be the area where uh, the wood was fired to actually to allow uh, for glass to be mounted in this particular part of the uh, furnace. Now, eventually we excavate the whole uh, uh, large feature. This, what you saw before was that his remaining bits are visible here, but the furnace was cut into a, a substantial backfill of a feature cutting into the road surface, and it was still going down anyway. So massive hole cut into the road again. And uh, from the lower part of that field, we have more evidence for um, industrial activity. This, this is a kind of, there are fragments of a, of a, of a crucible, uh, a type three uh, crucible is an early Roman type. So, so before the furnace was built, there was other activity still associated with, uh, still uh, more uh, industrial activity carried out inside. Um, again, this is only kind of initial um, assessment. So, so hopefully we'll, we'll get more evidence from, uh, from this particular area and have a more uh, clear idea of the sequence. What type of, of, what type of activity was carried out in this particular part of, of the site? Uh, when was carried out, especially? especially. Um, just to the, just to the east, uh, west of, of that uh, particular uh, large feature, we have a, a, a series of dams or, or, or clay or, or, or floor levels. Uh, which will let them um, overlie the road surface. So by the time by the time these are built, the road wasn't in fact it wasn't functioning anymore as a road. And so the idea was if the road is not functioning anymore and the furnace was built in the middle of the road, will the, this be part of a, a, the same activity? So, so we kind of decide to actually to uh, organize some kind of a, um, a strat uh, environmental sampling strategy in order to understand uh, what was best to do in order to understand this particular part of the site. Now, you can see we started removing some of the deposits and one, one peculiarity is this kind of concave uh, clay line uh, uh, feature, which very unusual, un unusual. I've never seen anything like that. Uh, so we carry on, uh, and also you can actually see a clay slab again underneath uh, the more mixed material. So um, eventually we have a specialist, uh, John Shepard, coming on site, and, and I want him to come on site to actually advise me on what how to approach this particular uh, part of the site. So he decided, he, he suggests to use a uh, uh, column sample. So we can actually see um, 
and we, we can actually look at very small fragments of, uh, of the industrial material like glass droplets and how they are redeposited along, uh, uh, within, within these deposits. Uh, so we have a better idea uh, of what was going on in this particular part of the site. And here we can see again, as we strip in the layer by layer, we kind of reveal more of, the, of that clay slab we saw at the beginning. And the clay slab also is truncated again, it's intricate about more features. Um, and this, these particular pits, they, they have quite a lot of uh, burn material again. Now, again, we're still waiting, still waiting for, for the specialist to tell me what was inside those features. Pottery, uh, industrial material, there is any glass, any, any, any metal. And so for the moment, we're just uh, uh, um, speculating basically, but hopefully, hopefully we're gonna have like some, some kind of answer to our question later. Um, so on this, on this slide, we can actually see what's going on in, in, the, in the very late Roman period. So I left the road here, but I, I just give you an idea where the industrial activity was being carried out. So you can actually see that, that the, the furnace was basically kind of in the middle of the road. The, the, the masonry building in the northwest corner of the site, uh, there is a good chance it was probably still in use, but we don't know that. Um, so, so something happened to this particular road system and they basically stopped working and being in use. And uh, uh, is it because in thus, I mean, uh, that particular part of uh, a Londinian became so um, uh, uh, good to actually to, uh, to, be, to be used as, as, as uh, for, for industrial activity, it's a possibility. Now, again, so this is very, very small assemblage. It is not the total, full totality of, of, the, of, the, of the glass found in, on site. But on this one, we can actually see some of the fragments for, for, the, um, for the base of the furnace, from one of the base of the furnace. Uh, and we can see um, some, of the, uh, some of the glass being uh, uh, recycled. I mean, uh, one, of, one of the peculiarity of uh, Roman glass making was that the Roman reuse the glass because, because uh, it gave the glass, the new glass, uh, uh, a better uh, uh, composition. Uh, to actually make a glass from scratch was very difficult and they, they kind of prefer to actually to reuse already made glass. Um, and and uh, you, you can see here, some, some of the glass which uh, uh, melted at the base of the, of the of the tank, the base of the furnace. Uh, some some more the same uh, uh, some in more interesting uh, fragments of glass here. Um, uh, possibly again a uh, uh, recycled bit, which were waiting to be uh, um, fragments was waiting to be recycled uh, in its la large batches. Again, and here we got like a, a very nice uh, example of a Miller Fury ball from the mid first century. So this is one of the most uh, fine glass, Roman glass, you can see. Um, so. Now, among other finds, we have like uh, uh, an open uh, Roman oil lamp uh, from, uh, from the mid second century again. In this case, the, the, the handle is missing, but uh, um, have an angle on this particular part. And uh, other finds will be the usual stuff, um, um, hairpins, bone hairpins. These are kind of uh, quite early. Uh, type again and uh, shell bracelet again fragments. I mean, this is not again just just a taste of the finds. I mean, there are quite a lot more in terms of finds 
a small fight on the side. And eventually also, we had also the usual stuff, the, the same in Port 2 again, um, which was found on site. Uh, and a particular of fine, small finds we have, I, I want to show you, is, is, is a stamp. It's quite, it's quite unusual. Uh, we've got a, 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 make, a, a pottery make stamp, and we've got quite an unusual kind of a thing in the middle. And, and uh, finally, I want to show you the um, position of the main road. Um, and how it does it fit with the with the um, the known uh, orientation of a, of a, of, a, of the road infrastructure again. So a particular site here in excavated they found this stretch of road. So our road is kind of a, a perfect align with uh, uh, this particular east west road. Um, and where we open up a little bit more, we will see our site and. Uh, this this road is west road joining into the main road going into uh, triple gate uh, fort okay so i mean uh, originally we have like the main roads and this will come uh, i don't know i guess later and will come in, uh, in, in a link that will probably uh, be built to actually to facilitate the movement of a, of a, of a, a the the, uh, the um, manufacture uh, the, the the things done uh, manufacturing this particular area I guess um, so this is basically the last slides and uh, and I'm done with the, with the presentation. <laughs>